I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're out to say welcome to our channel. You're watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Season 1, Episode 3. Last episode, we met God, ourself, the maybe world. actually ourself, the world. We're going to Lior now. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> oh no. With alchemy. They are street performers. I wonder if there are places where alchemy is forbidden. The idea of alchemy within a world that believes in God? I've never seen alchemy before. Must be this guy! <laughs> They're looking at Al. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Full metal. <laughs> Father Cornello. Interesting. Heresy, preacher. Huh. That's why they called the alchemy a miracle. Ed knows the truth about trying to resurrect someone. So gaudy and... I hate him. He has a stone! There it is! あの人。へえ、こいつがレトさんか。レトキオに興味が終わりですか？いや、あいにくと無宗教でね。神を信じ、敬い、感謝と希望に生きる。信じれば、きっとあなたの身長も伸びますよ。悪気がないんだ。本気で信じているのか。え。水35リットル炭素20キログラム、リン800グラム塩分20キログラム、その他もろもろ。Because they were two kids, is that why we had to take all of Al and some of Ed? Mm. レンキン術師ってのは科学者だからな。神様とかは信じちゃいないのさ。解き明かし、真理を追い求める。うん。今みたいなことを考えてた科学者でもレト様はお救いくださるでしょうか改心はいつでも受け入れられますよ面会を求めている者が来ておりますが私は忙しい帰ってもらえレリック兄弟だとはあ面会そうなのっておりましたが鋼
った連中がいたようだな。失礼の段お詫びし。高いところから見下ろして。受けに来たのかね。ぜひとも教えてもらいたいもんだな。せこい錬金術で信者を騙す方法とか。私の奇跡の技を錬金術と一緒にされては困る。いかがかな。これが錬金術。そこなんだよなどういうわけかできちゃってるんだよねだから錬金術ではないとそこで思ったんだけど不可能を可能にすると言われてるあの伝説の十方増幅器ならあのそうズバリ剣じゃないしその指輪がそうじゃねえのかただの指輪だ私は神から奇跡の技を許されたんだよ冒険のかどうやらとっ捕まえて体に効かなきゃならねえようだなまたいい京都のようだねローゼはい着ている銃を拾いなさいあはいそれで鋼の錬金術師を撃つのだそんな私の言葉は神の御言葉これは神のご意志なんだ I'm fucking hate this guy so gross 撃ちなさいどうしたんだね去年恋人を事故で亡くしついのどん底にいたのを救った。誰だ。コンジラ様です。そうだ。私がお前を救ってやった。そして何をやった。To bring him back。あの人を生き返らせてくれると。僕は違うんですけど。俺が鋼の錬金術師だ。貴様がそうだったのか。私にはこうするしかないの。あいつは天使だぞ。And you're gonna kill someone for it. What is that? What? A, a lion? A chimera? You, like, we could see the little, the like, rectangles fuck? making it up. And we still have this, like, innocent girl in here. Oh, shit. Steel legs. Winry! Wrong arm. Oh, my God. God. Full Metal Alchemist. <sighs> I love it. Full Metal Alchemist. Oh my god. Great shot. What the fuck? She's literally right there behind them. He's so gross. Whoa! Making a door. That's fucking cool. So cocky. <laughs> Look at them just going down the hallway. Oh, 
さっきの話本当なの僕たちはただもう一度母さんの笑顔が見たかっただけなんだ Jesus、うん、は失敗したしていなかった母さんも嘘よだって錬金術の基本は10日交換だ代償は大きかった兄さんは左足を僕は体を持っていかれたんだ兄さんは自分の血で書いたんだ痛かったはずだでも兄さんは僕の魂を鎧に定着させてくれた体を元に戻したいんだ兄さんも僕を元に戻したいと思っている命を落とすことになるかもしれない僕たちが選んだのはカーメックネイチャーこの道だなぜコーネロ様ならそれができるのよできるのよ小僧覚悟しろおっさん腹割って話そうぜの秘密が知りたいだけだそれとも軍に出動を要請しようか石を調べるためにさいいだろう賢者の石で何しようってんだチンケな教団なんかいらないだろう談話は私のためなら喜んで命を捨てる信者を生み出してくれる最強の軍団だ見ているがいい私はこの国を切り取りにかかるぞ賢者の石とバカ信者どもを使ってな、ね、い。様にもそのおこぼれぐらいは分けてやろう。What are we doing with the bell? Do you think we're recording this and blasting it to everybody? That'd be cool. だからあんたは三流だっつんだよ。<gasps> We are! Yes! Oh, because we start the episode off seeing the recordings! Oh. No way we're gonna get a Philosopher's Stone so early on. He might, he might use it. it. Overuse it, yeah. Oh no. What the fuck? Holy shit! It's like he got punched by God. Damn it! Do you cut it? Can't you know, but it's the other has no king, and I see another quarter. Nice monocle. A fake. What if that is the case? What if these are like. Mm. Replicas, but not the real of the real thing. But it's still powerful. Yeah. But it's not all powerful. <sighs> I feel so bad for her. Rosa just wants her boyfriend back. What is this song? She's looking for someone else to tell her, you know, what to live for. Oh, great line. Stand up and walk. Move forward. Oh, you've got two fine legs there, don't you? Lust. She's so mindful. Oh, 
Holy shit. They have like a symbol. What are they using them for? Father. And then he eats him! Okay, that was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Season 1, Episode 3. I have like this entire pillar of what this show and its lore and world is. And then we have Lust and Gluttony over here. Like, the idea of, like, alchemy and everything and the Philosopher's Stone and that it, I'm, I haven't connected the two yet. Mm -hmm. Father? Right, like, we're, with this episode alone, we are literally talking about how humans would perceive miraculous things happening, like humans being able to create, like, magic, alchemy to miracle working, how in a human brain how they could be distorted or believed to be different things um and the ease at which a charismatic person or a person who's able to abuse power could have a lot of people who desire for something to follow them do you think that in supplying and having people use these prop fake philosopher's stone it is giving something back to somebody else it's like giving power to a person who created them or to a philosopher's stone or to the father in this case like what is the purpose of giving people these stones to use these what we now are being told by ed are like replicas or yeah. knockoffs fakes yeah, I wrote that down. Like, what what are we using? Why are we experimenting with people in this way? Because she's like, now we have to start over. So what was your goal with him? Was it to get him far enough that he was able to achieve his own plan? Is it possible that our main characters are special enough, which they have garnered the attention of the villains that we have been introduced to? And they're wanting to dispose of them. Can we reread what we had Lust say at the end of episode one about Isaac? Oh, Isaac is dead, is he? Such a shame. He would have been a good sacrifice. So what about the Philosopher's Stone? Hmm, he overused it. And Gluttony shouldn't eat, eat such things. Within this, like, line of dialogue, it's it doesn't sound like there would be any necessary like necessary benefit from the the stone being used on its own but the idea of sacrifice like right like do you want someone to become powerful en enough or like the stone and them have a really good kind of symbiotic relationship to the point that then sacrificing that person is good for whoever the father is yeah or are we talking in the sacrificial sense like have them create havoc within this country to whatever certain extent in order for you to get closer to what you want and that's why we're sacrificing them in the first episode we brought up the idea of like non-consensual transmutation and like if you, I think you could bring that into conversation of sacrifice. Like, if you were theoretically trying to make somebody more powerful or have more life to manipulate, then having sacrifices would be that, what would be required, you know? And you're going to pick people that you, for a specific reason, they're not necessarily picking the most pliable people or the most manipulative, like the people that you can manipulate the most. They are picking, at least the two we've seen, someone who could have garnered a following with his beliefs on uh, the way morality of or immorality of how people were treated and people being killed, some sort of sympathetic viewpoint about the corruption of the king or the military that could have had followers amass. And then you have someone who's in the position of like a church leader who's able to, through using the stone, amass following. Are we trying to create 
uh, more people that are maybe against the current ruling government. Yeah. Or more people to be wanting to act against the laws of nature. Do you think the symbol that's on Lust is a tattoo, a symbol to represent, like, rep represent an organization, like a dragon with a triangle in it? Or do you think it's like a transmutation circle? Uh, at the moment, I'm thinking of it as just purely a tattoo or marking. I think when we, because it makes me think of the watches that all of the state alchemists are given has a dragon as what seems to be the symbol for bradley or the king the country um so, and maybe this is their own workings on a sub kind of king that they want to put into place do you think that lust and gluttony were people who who accepted these titles and conformed to them or they were created or manipulated in some way to become the physical manifestations of these sins that they are by somebody else. I don't know if they would have necessarily been, that's a good question. Like did, were they created to be this way by a powerful person or in whatever they desired and wished for against the laws of nature, did they end up coming out with the products of what they are in their bodies yeah. as lust and gluttony? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, obviously, there's going to be people who try to do similar things to what Ed and Al do, it, that try to uh, bargain for something, try to change or manipulate their body in some way or manipulate the world in some way. Do you think that if given a fake Philosopher's Stone, Ed could restore his own body? limbs or al's body no. or do you think it would need to be the real thing and i think it, it would have to be the real thing okay it seems like the philosopher's stone is something that lore wise would be able to be that impossible make yeah. the impossible happen maybe even go up to god get to the sun how we bring up the analogy of like the person who flow like flow flies too close to the sun, yeah. the wings falling apart. That maybe with the philosopher's stone, the impossible becomes possible. The heat from the sun would not melt the wax, and you wouldn't fall. You could you could actually stand next to God and almost be a god on earth. But there was such an increase in possibilities from just a fake. Like it, mm -hmm. it astounds me that a fake could surpass the rules and logic of mm -hmm. alchemy and i really do still like our theories and ideas of what creating that stone or the fake stones could take and how malicious and gross and ominous the possibilities there for if we know that equivalent exchange is a thing and these are created objects with power in them you gotta you gotta start theorizing or thinking about what the makeup what the recipe was to create this little stone like in just hypothetically if you had 10 people that you used as sacrificial lambs to create a fake stone you'd have 10 outrageous feats that you or that would generate a hundred outrageous feats that you could breed from quote unquote nothing but it's actually just you know mm -hmm. concentrated matter Right. Um, I think that that would then lead me to something that we got in this episode, which was a little more of a clear understanding of what exactly happened in terms of why all of Al and some of Ed was taken when they tried to bring back their mom. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't quite understood why there was a little bit of one taken and then all of the other until this episode where it was like pretty much spelled out for me that the recipe was for an adult, one adult person. Mm -hmm. They were two children. And that makes sense to me that you would take one whole of a child and then some of the other to kind of create almost this adult. Yeah. That, that makes sense to me. It's, it's just like, what was missing? Like, what was, what was missing in terms of like when, Ed is standing in front of those doors and he was like, I was missing something. Where was, 
where was their mom's soul versus where Al's soul was? Right, you know, were they being kept in different places? Like, Did Al die? Was his soul in a sort of limbo before going to a place where it can't return from? Is there a difference between natural death and alchemy storage? Interesting. Like, if you use someone's body for soul alchemy, data, right? are they then almost becoming the matter that can be used towards alchemy? And they don't exist in the same way of someone dying a natural death would then go to heaven or hell. Uh, I feel like these thoughts really go with what this episode is bringing up in terms of like our characters are saying their belief in God. From the episode prior to this episode two, we see one of our characters meeting with God or who, which is more an interesting uh type of God or way to think of God, which is one that is one with the world and in and within everyone and not someone that sits on a pedestal kind of smiting people. Yeah. When Edward created the doors, it reminded me of the doors in that realm with the God. And you know what also is really interesting? This episode definitely had an emphasis of how the brothers are in a place where they're like, yeah, there's no fucking way you can bring somebody back to life. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like they are wanting to get a philosopher's stone right now to resurrect their mom. They're doing it to get their bodies back. Right. It's like whatever Edward did learn almost like gave him the answer that you like you. Th it's not possible. Like that. That's the limit. Right. I do. I do think that is interesting. If you're giving this idea of this lore of a Philosopher's Stone that could probably do amazing feats, maybe even things perceived by alchemists as the impossible, as achieving things that are not done with an equivalent exchange, mm -hmm. you would then think that it would be with that possible to bring someone back from the dead. But I think that at least my current theory is that there exists a distinct difference between those that pass on like people that die and then what happened to al yeah and their body parts i still want to meet our alchemy teacher at some point in the mm -hmm. series i mean they have to be significant to some extent because of the fact that like they taught the protagonists more about alchemy i guess they don't have to be they don't have to be but but it, it could be cool to, like, even meet them in passing and see progress being done, or... What if it was, like, their dad sent the teacher or something? Right, like, this is a little village that they lived in. Did they really have a teacher of alchemy within this village, or is it someone who came out to teach them because of hearing of their existence? Yeah. Um, something else that I wanted to bring up is... The idea of um, their view about karma. Yeah. I really liked Al's line about karmic nature. It's, it, it's, you wouldn't think, I wouldn't have thought beforehand how hand in hand that goes with the ideology and like the, the definition of alchemy itself. Mm -hmm. Karmic nature. They're, they're very synonymous in some, you know, thematic ways. Definitely makes you think pretty positively about our main characters especially with having the established they don't want to kill anybody and they now have a very strong understanding of like what you put forth in the world is gonna come back at you maybe even tenfold yeah and you don't even really maybe know what you're wishing for what if it's worth what you might get mm -hmm. from a wish they know firsthand like i think it was episode two that we kept getting reiterated like those boys have seen hell yeah i liked that that interpretation of like why would you show them more hell because i would disagree with it and say that no they they were in hell they are in hell showing them more hell doesn't like it, it doesn't necessarily put them further down mm -hmm. they need something else they need a rope to grab onto to start climbing you know mm -hmm. right they already exist in this place it's not like any more bad things they see are going to be 
worse than what they've already gone through yeah. and or pushing them further down in a hell. No, it's just like a plane that they're in. Yep. You can't go further down except if you were dead. Um, Another thing that I would want to talk about is just quickly bringing up uh, how they also seem to really like autonomy. Like the, the idea that for the self, you decide for yourself, which really... It reminds me of how going into this story, I was thinking that Ed had sacrificed his brother or had been more of like the, maybe not intentionally, but was more of a, someone that was making a decision on behalf of someone else Mm -hmm. or was maybe the more, the stronger voice in that matter to an extent that would fit with taking away someone's autonomy. Yeah. It seems like the brothers themselves, as well as other characters in the show, like Roy and Riza, are a fan of people making choices for themselves and figuring out things for themselves and deciding what path they will be walking down. I think at the moment, my favorite character is Al. Like, true, like, they're... I, I love, and, and this could, like, mean nothing and we could get more information about how their relationship is, but the idea that they're only a year apart from each other is really important mm-hmm. for me. And be, because it puts them more on equal footing than how you described, like, going into it, it might have been different. It might have been just Edward leading the way and Al blindly following. I love his, like, understanding of Edward, but also he... I don't know. There's something about the way that he like talks and communicates with everybody else in the world that seems like he is extremely sympathetic and knowledgeable and holds a bit back until it's needed. And I really like that. Mm-hmm. Like almost like an emotional depth and maturity to yeah. him. Like but I- both both of them have it because of especially the experience of going through hell and seeing hell themselves, seeing the reality of what is wishes and desires of going up in the sky toward the sun. Like you, can you even imagine if Ed, Edward has any will to live, if he goes on and ex- accepts Roy's offer, if Al wasn't there, if Al didn't survive that and in, or his soul didn't at least, mm-hmm. and he wasn't in that suit of armor, there would have been not necessarily any motivation for Edward based off of him solely focusing in dialogue on saving Al's body. And obviously he- It's equal. It's equivalent. They both are prioritizing the other. Mm -hmm. It is Al that is prioritizing wanting to get his brother's limbs back and it is Ed prioritizing getting his brother's body back. I- with a character that like that, I'd be fearful of tragedy. Self-sacrifice? Self-sacrifice or it it seems more possible for some reason to me for Edward to get his limbs back than for Al to get his body back. Right. It definitely does seem more possible. I don't know why, though. Maybe because it seems much more tangible. Yeah. Because Ed still has most of his body and we're talking a limb in comparison to an entire body, organs, flesh, blood, everything. Yeah. Brain. Obviously, we have the soul, which seems to be a a very important piece, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Can you kill Al right now? Uh, Like That's so great. Can you undo the soul bonding? What if you remove the marker? We saw people trying to remove the markers in, like, the town. Like, like when we were trying to fight Isaac and we yeah. were, like, undoing the symbols and the circles that he had the spread The transmutation the circles, yeah. It, like, yeah, like it, what happens if you mess with the armor? I don't know. It's, when you get this idea of, like, soul bonding, it on surface level, it makes me think, like, oh, well, this is awesome and powerful and was super impressive. Like, he brought this soul back. But when you get the idea that it's bonded to this armor, like at first that sounds like a super strong glue, but then it does start to lead to like a trickle down effect of like fears and worries of like, okay, well, if someone could unglue, like we're getting that 
definition of alchemy at the beginning of both this episode and the episode prior of deconstruction and reconstruction. Could a bond be deconstructed? Could we deconstruct ourselves and then bond Al to something else if something were to happen to the armor can someone else do that deconstruction would the soul go just like leave if it was like unbonded also like are you the opposite end of things are you cursing somebody to immortality like in the idea of right. maybe not being able to bring soul data back and bringing somebody back to life is connecting their soul to something never letting them rest Mm -hmm. it, yeah right is this a, this a curse almost yeah. that ed has done to his brother i mean that's gonna hang heavy on his head if that's the case like as he ages and his brother never truly does yeah and and like could anything ever really kill his brother i mean not only did he try to do something like bring someone back so taboo, I, I feel like the soul bonding itself is also probably incredibly taboo. This episode, we had Al saying how painful he imagines it was for Edward. Was it painless for Al? Well, he didn't have to live with the physical aftermath of losing the limbs. Yeah. And it's interesting. So it's, it probably was a second for him. Like, he... It was probably initially painful, and then he felt no more pain yeah. after that. Damn. All right, that's all I have you. Yep. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.